Hey, Anthony Ha with TechCrunch here with uh, Rob Semper, uh, the Executive Associate Director at the Exploratorium. And you guys are launching a new app. Yeah, we're really excited to demonstrate this app. This is actually the second one we've done from the Exploratorium. And uh, we really, uh, it's about sound and, and, and how we hear and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the Exploratorium here in San Francisco is a place that people often come to visit. It's got physical exhibits. But it's actually more than that. It's actually a laboratory for innovation, uh, as Jack Dorsey and Reid Hoffman on our board like to say. Uh, it's a place that really creates things here but then sends them all over the world. And so with the apps we found on the tablet, we can actually create experiences that are kind of similar to what you might see at an exhibit, but do it in your own home or somewhere else. So our first app was on color, right. which is a subject that we've actually done uh, a lot of work on in the past. And we launched it about a year ago, uh, just passed a million downloads, which we're very excited That's great. about. Um, Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. We're really happy. We didn't know what would happen, so it's kind of nice to have success from the, from the user perspective. And uh, now we're moved on to another topic that we've done a lot of work on, which is about sound and hearing and really how our brain and, and ears and sound works. So, so with the color was your, was your first app, so I would imagine there's probably some th like things you learned from the experience. Um, so I'm curious, you know, kind of what are maybe some of the, the lessons um, that you took from that and then applied uh, to the new app? Right. The first one, um, just by looking at people's comments, we realized that they really liked the, the, the variety of things to do. We were, we were really amazed at the different kinds of people that used the app. It was both uh, kids were using it, teachers were using it, but then someone who had a color a paint store said, I use this app to show um, some of my customers something about color mixing. Uh, but we really just visual stuff. In this new app, we actually tried to explore much more some of the underlying technology in the, in the, in the uh, tablet that we could use around sound, sound generation, the microphones, make it even much more interactive than the first one. Great. Well, maybe the best thing to do is let's, let's take a look oh, at let's it. Let's go. Okay. So um, it's called Sound and Cupboard, and um, um, it's basically uh, made up of around 12 different, uh, we don't know whether to call them chapters or exhibitlets or digital p uh, files, whatever, but f 12 different things that you can do. Some of them are more interactive than others. So let's try one. This first one called Find the Highest Note. This is basically a keyboard a circular keyboard. And the real question is, can you find the highest note? So you can go ahead and just start playing the keys around in a circle, keep going around a couple times, and see if you find the highest note. OK. Oh, yeah, so it seems I, like it I, keeps I going it, up, I've right? <laughs> is it this one? Well, keep oh, going. It's, oh, I, if I, you keep going, it doesn't okay. sound sort of like it keeps going up and up and up. Oh, I see. OK, right, yeah. So this is actually an audio illusion. Uh, okay. so we know about visual illusions. We're kind of uh -huh. used to that. But audio illusions are kind of uh, stranger. This is actually invented by a, a researcher at Bell Labs in the 60s. Uh, and it was to show that our, our ears are actually processing sound. And our brain has to figure out what it's hearing. It's not so simple as just a note. Um, those actually, uh, these notes are actually made up of different tones, six of them that are mixed together. Okay. And the way it works, and it's kind of every, every uh, uh, every kind of experience has a sort of what's going on underneath it. Uh, and you can see that actually what happens is the notes change in volume. And so it sort of keeps sounds like it's going up. It's kind of like that Escher thing where you keep going up the steps and steps right. and steps and never go down. Right. So um, is there an actual highest note then? If there it's isn't. Not, no, there's there not. You're, okay. No, you're actually not hearing it. It's okay. basically continuous. Go, it'll go on forever like this. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, you, like you said, each, each, uh, each of these has sort of the kind of the experiential part and then sort of an explanation. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So so the idea is to really give it s some depth. You, you can do other things with it, each one, too. It's not just that about going up and up, but you can decide, like, which is a higher note is like this. Which would you say is the higher, the black note or the, or the white note? Do you have an idea? I would say the black note. Black note. Uh, I actually heard the white note to be higher. OK. Turns out there is no right answer for okay. that either. Okay. Uh, but. It, uh, it's different people because of the way This is a very deceptive uh, That's right. <laughs> little, little, game <laughs> little game here. here. Because of the way your brain is wired, it has to make a choice, and it kind of chooses one, and there's different kinds of, of psychology reasons why you might choose one or the <laughs> other. But if I start to play them, that one definitely felt higher than, than, than this one I started. Right. So that's kind of one of the examples you can do. And this is actually an exhibit we had on the floor of the museum that we actually recreated online. Okay. But there's some other things in here that are quite different. Um, for example, uh, which car would you buy? You can sort of close the doors on this, on this uh, car interactively. Just touch just the close door. Close the door. Touch, touch, 
Okay. Close the door. Close the door. Okay. Let's open up again. Listen again. Listen carefully. Oh, okay. Wait. Which car would you buy? Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm being put through these really difficult <laughs> tests. Um, I'm going to go with the uh, with the car, the red the car red on the car, right side. Right. So it's a pretty much of a more solid clunk, right? This other one has a lot of noise right. to it. Well, it turns out that uh, car noise is actually one of the things that people make decisions about <laughs> what they buy. The, the, the sonic environment around here actually kind of dictates what you like or don't like. And auto manufacturers have found out uh, that that's important. And some, some manufacturers actually, uh, oops, <laughs> some manufacturers actually bring uh -huh. sound in through the speakers of their car to make it sound even more like a, okay. a solid car. <laughs> okay. Um, so how many, and is this, is this also an exhibit or this is something? This is something new. It just really right. came up here. So some okay. of these are exhibits. Some of them are actually um, new things that we developed that are right. better on the iPad or on, on the tablet than it would be in, in physical life. Mm -hmm. um, here, here's an interesting one, which okay. is sort of, it's kind of like, you know, that website, Bad Lip Sync. I don't know if you've ever seen <laughs> that site where people lip sync, but they have different kinds of words underneath it. Oh, no, I don't think so I've seen that. I feel so well, out of it now. Fought. Fought. So if you look at this person speaking Fought. and then close your eyes. Fought. 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 What, what happens to me is I hear, I see him saying, thought, and if I close my eyes, I hear thought. Oh, okay. So it turns out that hearing is involved not only what you hear, but also what you see, and, and, th and those things coming together actually are how you interpret the world around you, how you interpret what you see. Mm -hmm. so, so this is filled with all kinds of things um, that are um, fun to play with. Um, here's one where you can actually speak into the recorder and then pay it back backwards, which is sort of a favorite thing to do. Okay. You can, they sort of palindromes, which are English words where they basically look like they could be um, read back and forth, like a race car. Uh, and then there are audio palindromes where you can say something, and if you say it backwards, it sounds the same way. Huh, okay. So let's try it here. This is a, uh, just a recorder, so okay. um, you can just push record. And why don't you just say... Do I hold it down or just tap just, it? Just tap it and s say, say yes. Try that. Say yes. Oops, sorry. Say yes. Now you can play it backwards. Say yes. <laughs> so <laughs> sort of the same, right? Um, right? This one's funny. You can do who's that. Who's that? Who's that? That's you. <laughs> so these are just, uh, they're kind of tricks of the way your, 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 uh, your brain sort of processes sound. Just mm -hmm. like actually visually your brain is always processing what you see. But people are as much used to playing with sound like this. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask, um, so you know, you've sort of got this, uh, I'm sorry, how many of these sort of chapters did you say? There's there 12 were? in here. 12. Um, do you expect that you'd sort of update the app over time and add new ones? Yeah, what we've done with the first one is we found people, of course, they write back and they say, hey, it's great, but you know, can you do more? Or can we add more? So we did an update on the color one, added mm -hmm. five or six more things. And the same is true here. We can add a few more. Um, it's kind of like a browsing experience, like when you go to a museum where you kind of choose to go to this exhibit or that exhibit. The app works the same way. Mm -hmm. And, and so you were talking earlier about this idea that you know the, the color app had been downloaded a million times. Um, so I, I, I guess it sounds like you sort of think of these apps in a way as to reach a way to sort of reach this like broader audience than you can't reach sort of from a physical location. That's right. I mean, one of the great things about a museum is it's physically located in one place. But one of the bad things about it, it's physically located in one right. place. So when we started working online back in the 90s and put our, our website up in 93, we realized all of a sudden we could reach all these other people with the same experiences that we were actually providing the local audience. And that's why these apps are so interesting to sort of get the same experience into someone's home or on the bus or wherever they happen to be. And, and um, are you, have you started thinking about what the third app will be? We have. Um, certainly there's a, other kinds of perceptual things that <laughs> we can do. People want something around touch or maybe around time. But we also are excited about making use of some of the, the, the functionality of these devices. They have a lot of instruments inside. You know, they measure, they have gravitometers, they measure three directions of, of, uh, of, of directions of holding it. We think there's a way to actually make more out of the instrumentation that should kind of stretch this into even a new domain. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing with what you guys do next. Um, thanks again for coming by. Well, thanks for having us.